Hi, my name's Christina. Hi, my name's Estella. We're both members of the Crane Lab, where we study proteins that are really important for signal transduction. Signal transduction is a fundamental process that's important for biological systems. And it looks at how signals are transmitted through a cell using a series of molecular events. On a molecular scale, we'd be looking at how proteins are affected and excited by molecules or by photons of light. And what this then results in are those proteins changing its interactions with signaling um, partners, resulting in downstream transfer of signals. Signal transduction is a really important topic um, for human health, especially for topics like bacterial virulence and a circadian clock. And the reason we care about circadian clock is because it affects human health. For example, you may be wondering, why is it that it's hard to fall asleep after using your phone right before bed? Or why is it difficult to sleep with the light when the light is on? The reason for this is because we have circadian clock proteins in our body that respond to light. And so they interact with their partner proteins differently in the light versus the dark. We are able to study these proteins both by looking at their structure and their function. Now let's take you to the lab so you can learn some more. Welcome to our lab. As you notice, we have many different instruments and tools that we'd like to show you. This is my lab bench where you'll find a lot of commonly used reagents and chemicals along with tools that are important for use in studying proteins. Druva, one of my lab mates, is demonstrating how he extracts proteins from cells. This is our tissue culture hood. Tissue culture is a method of biological research in which fragments of tissue from an animal or plant are transferred to an artificial environment in which they can continue to survive and function. In this case, the specific environment is in a flask in our lab. I'm currently using Drosophila or fruit fly cells uh, to study circadian clock because it's an excellent model system related to human health. This is our cell culture room. Here we use cells such as E. coli to do large scale protein expression. After we express the proteins of interest in our cells, we want to isolate and purify them from the unwanted protein that is naturally produced. To do this, we use an instrument called an FPLC, which will separate the proteins by size or by charge based on the columns that we attach to it. This is our gel electrophoresis station. Gel electrophoresis is a laboratory method used to separate mixtures of DNA or proteins according to molecular size. Specifically, this is a protein gel I'm loading right now um, that will be used so that the molecules in my protein can be separated and pushed by an electrical field through the gel that contains small pores. This will allow me to visualize the size of my protein. So as you can see, while a protein gel is run vertically, a DNA gel, which is what I'm loading right now, is actually run horizontally, but it operates in the same premise in that you're able to separate DNA by the molecular size. Once the DNA gel is done running, we're able to visualize the bands using ultraviolet light, as you can see here. This is our lab's glove box. A glove box is a sealed container that is designed to allow uh, someone or like the user to manipulate objects where a separate atmosphere is desired. For example, uh, some people in our lab, like Estella, actually work with metalloenzymes, which are proteins that bind to different metals. They actually can't be in um, oxygen environments. So in this glove box, we're able to remove oxygen and so we can work with the proteins the way we want to. One of the ways that we studied the behavior of these proteins is through our uv vis spectrometer. So this looks at the interaction of proteins with light. So in this box here, there is a bright light source that is used to illuminate our sample, which is in these cuvettes that you see on the left. We frequently use the uv vis spectrometer to measure the concentration of our proteins, and we do this using something called a Bradford assay. The Bradford assay is a colorimetric assay, which means that it changes color after it reacts with a certain chemical. And in our case, those are the amino acids in a protein. So first I'm measuring the baseline color of the Bradford solution, which you can see is this brownish color. And that is going to give us the background value so that we can subtract it out after we measure the sample. Afterwards, I'm interested in seeing what the concentration of this very beautiful yellow-green protein is. 
we're going to add in a small amount of our protein. So this is about a thousandth fold less than the initial amount of the Bradford solution. I'm gonna mix, mix, mix. See, it's actually getting a little bit darker. And we measure it. And now you can see that there is a peak. After we use a mathematical equation, we can determine the amount of protein that is in that sample. This is our laser lab. Where in front of me is this really powerful um, laser in this purple box here that is used to excite our samples up to um, an excited electronic state. And then we can monitor it uh, as it relaxes down to its ground state using this uh, white light source, which is supplied by this helium arc lamp. And so effectively what this is, is a really fast and powerful camera. So you can think about this um, kind of similar to maybe when you're out sledding on a hill um, if you're out any time uh, in the last winter and someone was taking a picture of you the entire time. So if someone were to take a picture of you during this uh, sledding process, you would either be at the top of the hill, somewhere in the middle, or um, you're finished and you're at the bottom. And this entire event happens over seconds, maybe minutes, depending on how fast you're traveling. But for protein molecules, these events happen a million times faster, so on the microsecond time scale. And in order to monitor that, we need really fast, powerful uh, cameras. So our, what our setup does is it allows for us to excite the molecules up to the top of the hill, up to its excited state. And then as it relaxes, we're taking pictures of the entire process, um, illuminating it with this white light source the entire time. And in doing so, we can study a lot about the properties of these proteins and how their electronics behave under certain conditions. Once we have our purified protein, it's time to start thinking about protein crystallization. Protein crystallization is the process of formation of a regular array of individual protein molecules stabilized by crystal contacts. Here Rebecca has just finished setting up a crystal tray. Each well either has a different pH or a different concentration of different reagents, and in having every well be different, we are able to find the conditions that best allow our desired protein to crystallize. Once we have the crystals, we can determine the structure using X-ray diffraction, or alternatively, we can use cryo-electron microscopy. In both methods, we use very high-resolution microscopy that allow us to see uh, atomic resolution. Thanks for stopping by our lab. We hope you enjoyed the tour. Feel free to read more about what our group does at crane.chem.cornell.edu.